Star Wars Legends is a collection of all the stories and lore before the canon was overhauled in 2014. In this series, we go back to see what the expanded universe was all about. A thermal detonator was a fist-sized grenade with a metal casing and a beradium core. Beradium was a highly unstable synthetic element that when detonated would create a fusion reaction, rapidly releasing heat so intense that it would disintegrate any material that didn't conduct heat or thermal energy. It was essentially a nuclear reaction, but the unique part about a thermal detonator was that it had a built-in particle field. So once the core was detonated, this particle field would expand in every direction to a predetermined range and then contain the blast in a sphere of destruction. Everything within the blast sphere would be vaporized and anything just beyond the sphere's boundary would be totally unharmed, except maybe mentally traumatized. So this blast radius could be designed to range anywhere from 1 to 100 meters. But they are most commonly used with a 5 meter blast radius. And the 100 meter ones were illegal and only found on the black market. After the explosion, radium particles would linger from the detonation that could cause radiation poisoning. Thermal detonators had two types of settings. The first was the most common, a timed detonation set by the user, up to a maximum of 5 minutes. And the second was a dead man switch where if the user were to let go of the thermal detonator without disarming this switch, it would go off by itself. The dead man switch was used to intimidate others, ensure safety in a hopeless situation, or to simply take everyone down with you. The shell of thermal detonators were built with a mixture of thermite and pretty much any other metal, usually a reflective alloy. The thermite that was built into it was a black powdery substance that when ignited would burn up to 4500 degrees celsius, which is as hot as white phosphorus. Anyone who's played Spec Ops Line remembers white phosphorus. Imagine a nuclear bomb, for example, in the form of a small ball. Inside it are all the necessary components for a nuclear reaction, but the critical mass hasn't been reached. Suppose I put an explosive on the outside of the bomb and detonate it. The space inside the bomb will begin to shrink towards the center of the shockwave. The density of uranium or plutonium inside will increase and we get a nuclear explosion. In a simple way, it can be called a detonator. When it's activated, energy is released, which triggers an explosive thermonuclear reaction inside the bomb. Thermal detonators are also commonly modified with magnetic shells or adhesive to stick onto their target. Some thermals were even modified to explode on contact. The biggest producer of thermal debts was the second largest weapon manufacturer in the galaxy, Mersan. Mersan? Mersan. They were very rarely used by soldiers on the battlefront, despite the way every Star Wars game has portrayed thermal detonators. In fact, official games have never gotten thermal detonators right. We'll dive more into that phenomenon later. The reason they're rarely used is because the beradium cores were so unstable that they were known to accidentally detonate if they were jarred, exposed to heat, dropped, hit with a stray shot, and in rare cases, they might even detonate in midair right after a toss for no apparent reason. They were only to be used as weapons in extremely desperate cases. In fact, they were more used for demolitions, breaching defenses, clearing obstructions, or sabotaging large equipment or buildings. Although Mersan formally only sold to military, demolitions experts could also get a hold of them with strict regulations, but otherwise they were illegal for civilian possession. It was a capital offense in most systems to have one. But still, they would find their way onto the black market, and they were mostly used by criminals and terrorists. Pirates would often try to capture shipments of thermal detonators despite the inherent risk of an accidental detonation. They were highly sought after and valued at around 2,000 credits per grenade. So since the Old Republic, there's been multiple types of thermal detonators. The Class A flaunts a devastating 20 meter blast radius. And that's 20 meters in every direction. That's the size of a Boeing 737, but in a sphere. To put things into perspective, this thermal detonator from Movie Battles 2 is about 5 meters in every direction. Now imagine that times 4 in a 20 meter blast radius, which would vaporize everything in this entire room and then some. 
which makes a lot more sense how everyone would be terrified of a thermal detonator. They were set to a 20 meter radius because the average soldier can throw a grenade about 30 meters. But the A-Class was commonly tuned to a smaller blast radius by the user depending on the situation, to minimize collateral damage. The most well-known depiction of a Class A thermal detonator was in Return of the Jedi when Princess Leia used one to intimidate Jabba the Hutt to get double the money for Chewbacca's bounty, using the Dead Man Switch setting. A Class A was also used by Lando during Shadows of the Empire, where he tossed the thermal down a trash chute and it was a big enough blast to destroy Shizor's palace on Coruscant, which was a 102-story building. Class A's were the reason thermal detonators were so feared. Which brings us to Marisong Class Fs. Now, this isn't a real name for these, and I'll get to that in just a moment. There's always been a discrepancy between Legends source books and how thermals are portrayed in other media, specifically video games and TV shows where they're essentially just frag grenades or plastic explosives, never a fusion reaction. Here we go. See, that guy's fine. No. He should be dead. Oh, okay. A lot of games get it wrong. Battlefront, Knights of the Old Republic, Star Wars Galaxies, the Jedi Knight games. But some do come close, like Super Star Wars. At least it's a sphere. This is because they have some artistic license with the video game. You can kind of change things up for gameplay reasons because you don't want to have a weapon that atomizes every enemy, especially in multiplayer games. Unless it's a fan-made mod. Movie Battles 2, greatest mod of all time, no flaws, 10 out of 10. But in TV shows, they were also just made to be big, messy, fiery explosions. It's not that big of a deal because a big explosion would still intimidate Jabba's throne room. And I understand that television canon took precedent over book canon, but it still seems wrong. Like the earliest mention of how a thermal detonator works dates back to 1984 and is consistent in source books up until 2007. And pretty much all the books say the same thing. It's a disintegrating blast. The blast is shaped like a sphere. Anything just outside the sphere is unharmed. And there's no mention of a fiery explosion. It's a clean, deadly tool. Kind of makes you wonder if they ever considered showing an accurate depiction of a thermal detonator. Was it too violent? Maybe the idea of killing someone with a nuclear reaction wasn't very family friendly. Maybe if somebody got in a refrigerator to survive a thermal detonator, they would have put it in a TV show. The obvious conclusion is that the creative directors of a show or a video game want a big explosion and thermal detonator is just that iconic Star Wars grenade. And Legends wasn't always consistent. So maybe these were Class A detonators that had the beridium core stripped out and replaced with cheaper explosives to turn a profit. Or maybe they were knockoff grenades to look like thermal detonators. Since these are faux TDs, possibly sold on the flea market, or possibly are total fakes and would fail a thermal inspection, I think it's most fitting to call them Marisol Class Fs. I'm altering the cannon. Pray I don't alter it any further. Class C was only referenced in a couple books. Not much is known about the specifics, but it's powerful enough to kill nearly everything within the size of a cargo hold of a Corvette warship. So it's probably around 10 meters or more, so maybe a less potent Class A. It was used by the notorious bounty hunter Ara Singh, and it was also used by anti Yuzon Vong droids during the New Jedi Order. Blast Tech was another weapons manufacturer in the galaxy and they produced the N20 thermal detonator, a beradium core code key grenade, which is a mouthful. So you could just call them BCCKs or BCC keys or Bukakis. The Bukaki has an adjustable timer of six to 18 seconds and a blast radius of five meters. You can only activate one of these if you put the right code into it, but it has unlabeled buttons. Each detonator had a different code for each soldier. So if enemies obtained these thermal detonators, they were practically unusable. These were primarily used by the Galactic Empire, later adopted by the Alliance, also used by the Galactic Republic, Kaboom! and were mostly used by stormtroopers. Stormtroopers who were issued a BCCK were also trained to detonate their thermal detonators if they were ever in a situation where they would become prisoners of war, also hopefully scoring a couple more kills before being taken down. 
The Mersan V1 thermal detonator was contracted by the Republic Army during the Clone Wars. These thermals looked like Class A models, but instead of the reflective chrome shell, they had more of a slate gray look to them. The V1 was designed specifically for use on the battlefront by the Grand Army, and was tuned to a much smaller explosion compared to the traditional Class A, minimizing friendly casualties. The V1 was issued to all units of the Clone Army. And although it was exclusively sold to the Republic in this deal, it was also widely spotted being used by Separatist droids as well. Merson formally refused to sell to the CIS, but secretly sold to both sides of the conflict, alleging that munitions were being smuggled by some third party. This was common for most weapons manufacturers in the galaxy because selling to both sides would maximize profit and keep the war going on as long as possible. During the Old Republic, there was a much lesser used MM-40 thermal charge. The MM-40 was a detonite-based thermal charge, which was kind of a putty explosive material, but could also be turned into a gel. And it was used mostly during the Mandalorian Wars, and it's about the size of a briefcase and strong enough to destroy a fortified building. Though they were heavily destructive, they are also very fragile, and they were easily rendered useless by even a small trace of blaster energy or heat. Thermal detonator tape was first seen at the Battle of Geonosis, being used by the Grand Army. This tape had a strip of beradium, and the adhesive was made up of detonite gel, which could be ignited by electricity, radiation, or even a kinetic shot from a slug thrower weapon. Thermal tape was so effective, it could cleanly open a triple sealed blast door. Let's see what kind of thermal detonator I have. A dud! Oh my god, it's it just started snowing. It's a Christmas miracle. Stupid class F. So there you have it, what a wonderful galaxy of thermal detonators. If you liked the video, consider sharing. Thank you to my patrons, my fellow smugglers. You can find behind the scenes content on the Patreon, and we'll be adding more stuff very soon. Thank you for watching, I'll see y'all next time. The legend will never die.